Hey everybody, it's election day in America, so I thought it'd be a great day to spread some love and light. I'm wearing my Today is a Great Day to Change the World shirt. And uh, yeah, so I thought it'd be a good day to do the Be a Good Human tag. This tag was created by Jen Campbell to just encourage people to share the books that have made them a better human and that they think other people should read to become a better human. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think we all could use a little help with that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. I'm probably going to talk about some books that maybe some of you haven't heard of. Obviously, yes, Harry Potter makes you a better human. We all know that. Uh, but I wanted to go with some of the more non-obvious ones. So I'll go ahead and jump right in. The first one is Of Mice and Men, which I actually read this year for the first time uh, by John Steinbeck. And I'm really starting to enjoy him a lot. I think I will feel like some of his other books that I'm reading next month are going to be added to this list as well. This is a classic. Um, it's actually on Low Nut right now where I'd show you, but it's very short. It's under 100 pages, and it tells the story of two men who are kind of on the outs uh, trying to make their way to scrounge up enough money to purchase like the, the farm of their dreams. Lenny is kind of simple-minded, and at first glance, you kind of feel like he is a burden on his friend. And as you go through, you realize that they really both give a lot. You learn about the collective power of dreaming together and uh, just how important it is to have someone to witness your life and go through it with. And uh, I got to see the play production this year as well. This is just such a beautiful story, and I cannot recommend it enough. I feel like the more we learn from each other, the better off we are. Uh, yeah. The second one is Half the Sky by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wooden. I've recommended this before. Basically, if you are a feminist or want to learn about female issues globally, this is the book to read. Like, this one is it. This this one. The, <laughs> please, please, please read this book. Um, <laughs> I think it's probably in my top five nonfiction you need to read in your lifetime. Because, uh, like it says, Half the Sky. Women hold up Half the Sky. And if we make things better for women, we make things better for everyone because we're, we're raising other generations. And uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about this book. It changed my mind on some things. It asked some hard questions, but it covered the gamut. I recommend not reading it all at once. Break it up a little bit just because there's a lot of information to go through. Um, yeah, this book is important. Super duper important. The third one is Just Mercy, and I've talked about this one before. It's by Brian Stevenson, and it is about the injustices in the American uh, legal system, especially for minorities, and uh, what that means. But what I appreciate about this book is that it challenged some of my own assumptions uh, about people in the criminal system. Uh, yeah, a lot of times I don't think they deserve to be there. And it's not fair that that they go there for things that other people don't have to go for. And I really appreciate this book. It's a very good read. Um, none of these nonfiction ones are dry by any means. So don't be scared off by nonfiction. It's good for you. Um, next one is really funny. <laughs> and I know a few people on BookTube have said that they don't like this one. But I love it. How to Be a Woman by Caitlin Moran. She is a comedian from the UK. And I ate this book up. I loved that she talks about the little things that you kind of take for granted about being a woman, like shaving your legs, uh, why it's unfair that we have to spend money for razor blades and all this extra stuff just to be considered presentable, whereas a man can go out uh, with nothing on, with a beard, nothing shaved, everything's fine, nobody looks at him differently. Um, yeah, I appreciated those kinds of things. And she takes such a comedic view of it. Uh, I think my favorite chapters, though, were she has one called Why to Become, Why to Have Kids, and the other one is Why Not to Have Kids. And I love that that is given as a choice and uh, with both pros and cons on either side. As a parent, obviously, I chose the more pros than cons side for having kids. That's not everyone's choice, and I, I respect that. I'm... <laughs> I know people who, who would rather not, and that's totally fine. And I love that she just lets you own your brand of woman, um, but also ask questions about why you're doing things. So the next one is a novel, and it's Homegoing by Yaa Jesse. We read this for Diversathon, and this book covers basically 200 years of a family's history, but you learn through each chapter a different person in their family line and how slavery, that one 
gamut, <laughs> that one little thing, that one word, slavery, made such a big difference for one side of the family versus the other. Uh, it was beautifully written. It reads really well as far as uh, it kind of feels like a short story collection because you're learning about different people, even though you kind of have a common thread of families. Uh, I, again, I could not read this in one sitting. I had, I had to put it down three or four times just to cry and to kind of stomach things because there are some hard chapters in this, but I think it's very, very important to read. The next one I actually read for the first time this year as well, and it is Animal Farm by George Orwell. Uh, I loved 1984. Um, I don't know why I missed this one, but I picked it up at Half Price Books this year and gave it a whirl. I read it in a few hours and I was laughing out loud, but also just like wanting to write down all of the quotes. They're so good. It kind of tells as in an animal allegory form, if you're unfamiliar, the story of a farm where some of the animals who are more clever, crafty, um, resourceful, decide to run it and take over from the human farmer because it's better for the animals to run it for themselves. However, they take advantage of the animals that are not as crafty and are more of the working type. And uh, I think you kind of realize um, so many similarities. As you go through the, the farm, they talk about how some animals are more equal than others. And just, I, I was laughing, but also at the same time, just nodding my head along because you know, how things are going <laughs> and what's going to happen. So I really think Animal Farm is a great one to read if you're thinking about government and why it's important to stand up for yourself and for others uh, before it's too late. So the next one is called The Shallows and it's by Nicholas Carr. I have not heard anybody on booktube talk about this, uh, but it's about what the internet is scientifically and chemically, all, all the things doing to our brains. And I, I think it was written maybe seven or eight years ago. So I know there have been studies to show that this is indeed happening. And while the internet is a great tool, and I'm probably more addicted than I should be, I think it's good to know what we're using and, and what it is doing to us. So yeah, it just kind of helps you unwind and, and think about things differently. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's been a while since I've read it, but it's I, I know all the science was very sound then, and I, I read studies since then to show that, yes, that is in fact happening to us. The next ones are uh, kind of more about consumerism. Uh, the first one is called Blue Sweater by Jacqueline Nav Navigarts. Navigrats, maybe. Um, and it's about the the journeys that our clothes get to get to us in the store, on our bodies, and then out again. And I think this was a really uh, interesting look at the clothing industry and uh, what we are spending our money on and what we can do differently. The next ones are called Can't Buy My Love and Deadly Persuasion by Jean Kilborn. And these books are really good about what marketing techniques people are actually using to affect our, advertise, like our advertising and consumer choices. And I thought this was very, oh, I could not put it down. It was very exciting for me to just read uh, different examples of um, marketing techniques and uh, how just little little tweaks have, have made things more like, well, of course you need to have this. And yeah, deadly persuasions geared specifically towards, uh, the female advertising industry. So I would definitely recommend reading some of those if you're interested. The book seven for me by Jen Hatmaker was also very life altering. Um, basically she starts to realize that she has too much in her life, too many choices, too much food, too much clothes, too many, everything. And she couldn't focus on her values, her faith, what was important to her. So for each month she changed, she did a different thing for each month. And she chose seven foods one month where she just ate seven food and she did little variations on it, but, um, she kind of lived with the, the monotony of that for a little while to see which things she kind of latched onto as an addiction. She did seven, seven articles of clothing. Uh, she did exclude underwear, I think, but, um, seven articles of clothing that she mixed and matched. And, uh, she talks about that impact on her seven different habits. And I just really appreciated the idea of cutting back what was not necessary to focus on what was. And yeah, it was a very interesting book. W whether you decide to actually go through with it or not, I think it helps you look at your own life and figure out where do I have things I don't need. Um, so I really liked that one. The next few are about kind of some refugee issues or human rights issues. 
The first one is In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. And I've talked about this one before. She's from North Korea. And she talks about the experience of living there. The second one is City of Thorns by Ben Rollins. And that is a compilation of nine different refugee stories uh, of them living in the biggest refugee camp in the world. And uh, what brought them there, what dreams they have, what how it's affected their relationships, and what their hopes are for the future. Um, so that was another really good one. The next one is called Girls Like Us. And I forgot to write down the, the uh, author's name here, but it's about sex trafficking. And um, it was also very eye-opening for me as far as uh, what's going on in the world. Half of Sky does cover sex trafficking as well. And I think that was my first introduction to diving into the, <laughs> the injustice there. But Girls Like Us is, is specifically, um, I think, the United States. So it's a good one to pick up. And she is actually a survivor. So... Uh, own voices. Yay. <laughs> They're important. Um, the final one that I wanted to tell you about uh, was Love Warrior by Glennon Doyle Mor Melton. And this book was just beautiful. It talks about accepting yourself, finding love for yourself so that you can love others and recognizing that we all have our issues. We all have things that we're trying to, to just feel love with. And I really appreciated that a lot. I think... <sighs> We're all so different, but we're all really the same. The more you sit down at somebody at their table and you talk about the family and the weather and um, isn't it crazy what your parents are, you know, all these different things. I love the fact that really the human experience boils down to all of us trudging through it together. And um, the more we read, the more we realize that. And I really appreciate that. Um, I want to tag anybody who wants to do this tag. I think it's a really important tag for all of us to do. Um, I might do another video at some point, <laughs> uh, just with some more ones that I think of. Uh, but I really, really encourage all of you to go out and make the world great today, uh, wherever you are, and uh, shine a little light. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.